Authentic community requires unity. One of the things I loved actually thinking about unity is and y'all were up here singing worship and it was so cute. Y'all were all hugging on each other, had arms around, singing the songs together. Some of you have horrible voices. Some of you have good voices. I'm just playing, just playing, just playing, just playing. God loves it all. God loves it all. I'm just messing. Um, but one of the things I was actually, I, I loved seeing that though. Seriously, I love seeing you guys embrace each other, sing worship together as a unified body of Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about for a little bit. So as I see you guys doing that, and also me being a, uh, have been a part of Fusion for the last couple of years, um, I do know that unity is something that I think Fusion does get right. Like, I do think that people here feel unified. There's some people that don't feel as connected, and I understand it takes some time, and we'll talk about that for a little bit. But for the most part, if you go on trips, if you go to RVR, if you go to James Project, you can get the real sense of what unity is here in Fusion. So, question is, how do we continue to do that in the body of Christ? How do we continue to be unified, all right? What does it mean to be unified? Um, some of you are, well, all of y'all probably too young to know this song, but uh, Queen Latifah came up with a song called Unity. Any, any, any adults know this song? U N I T Y. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. One. Oh, oh, you know, Phoebe, thank you. Thank you. Two, three people. U N I T Y spells unity, all right? So, unity. So, there's a couple things in life that requires things to work together in order for something to be accomplished. So some of them, let's, let's go through some facts real quick. All right, so did you know your heart will beat 2.8 billion times during your lifespan, and during your life it will pump some 680,000 tons of blood through your 60,000 miles of blood vessels? That's a mouthful. All right, another fun fact. Did you know you have about 86 billion brain cells that are joined by 100 trillion connections? I have less than all of you. Brain cells dead. Your skeleton completely renews itself every 10 years. And some of y'all even more because y'all break a lot of bones. The human bone can support five, five times more weight than a steel bar of the same size. Pretty cool fact. This one was cool. Your body sheds 1.5 pounds of skin particles each year. Like right now, y'all shedding a whole bunch of skin particles all over the floor. Disgusting. And lastly, your eyes can detect about 10 million different colors. 10 million. All right. So in all of those fun facts, let's just take the eye for example. The eye cannot work unless there's so many different aspects that, that go on. So you have your pupil, you have your corneas, you have your, your retinas, you have all these things that are working together in order for your eye to just function. The eye is not just an eye. Like, there's so many parts of the eye that have to function in order for the eye to function properly. So that's what we're talking about with unity, which brings us to our verses, and I'll just read this. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 26. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, and this is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. Some are Gentiles, so two different people. Some are slaves and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how much would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand that I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important 
are actually the most necessary. And the parts that we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen while the more honorable parts do not require their special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. So it brings me to the first point. Every member of the body matters, and that means you. Look to somebody, tell them, look them in the face and say you're important. Turn to another neighbor, tell them, look them in the eye, say, you're important. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. If, we, if we're going to get really, 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 really real here, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. But if I ask you to raise your hands, how many people, don't raise your hand think that they're important. Some people raise their hand, right? But if we're honest with ourselves, if I ask another question, if I ask other people, how many people here don't feel like they're important, a lot more people will raise their hand than we give it credit for. Interestingly enough, if I ask you at a certain time in your life if you think you're important, your answer would probably be no. Depending on what it is that you think that you're weak at. Depending on how it is that you feel about yourself in that moment. And I think all of us have experienced this probably at some point in our lives. We go, I'm not important or I'm not as necessary as I think I am. I have to prove myself in order to make myself feel like I'm, I'm, I'm capable of something or I am important. And one thing I do want to tell you guys is that in God's body, you are important. You are completely important just the way that you are. Like those verses said, God made you specifically for the body of Christ. And when you come into the body of Christ, God has, says, I have a purpose and a plan for you, not just for your own life, but so you can help grow the entire kingdom of God. So if you belong to the body of Christ, you have a very, very important role, regardless of how it is that you live. God loves you. Does he want you to live in holiness? Of course. But God loves you so much and has such a place for you in this life that you are important no matter what. So, again, every member of the body matters, and that means you. You are important. Um, I'm going to skip through some of these uh, verses for the sake of time. Uh, let me just go here. Um, if the foot says, <clears throat> I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does, does not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Let me ask y'all a question. Um, how, what y'all like on your salad? If you eat a salad, what you like? Lettuce, cheese, ranch. What'd you say? Is that olives? All right, some corn. I really like corn. Raisins. Cro oh, definitely croutons. Garlic croutons. Uh-huh, little raisins. All right. All right, now let me ask y'all a question. Since we, since we covered all of that, what would a salad be if it were only lettuce? Plain. Plain. What would a salad be if it was only tomato? Now this one a little different. What would a salad be if it was only cheese? That would be good, that would be good, that would be good, that would be good. All right, the point can... <laughs> Can it be melted? The point is, the thing that makes the salad the salad is that it has a mixture of so many different things that are not trying to be something else. The lettuce is not trying to be a tomato. The, it's not. It's not. Oh, it's not. I taste it. It's not. Let me stop. Olives aren't trying to be raisins. Raisins aren't trying to be corn. And corn aren't trying to be croutons. But the thing that makes the salad the salad is that many different parts act exactly the way that they are supposed to be, and they bring themselves to the party, and then you put it all together, and we enjoy it. 
The same way we're talking about being in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is better when you are being yourself. When you are being who God created you to be, the body of Christ is better. So what does that mean? When God created you with your unique hair, when God gives you your unique voice, the highs, the lows, you with your mole, your speaking ability, your art, your smile, your jokes, all of these things help make you who it is that you are. And so when we bring all of those things into the body of Christ, we are acting as a part of a whole body, which means we are going together as one. Everybody is not going to be a foot. Everybody's not going to be an eye. Everybody's not going to be a pinky toe. But we need them all. But we need everybody to be themselves. And it's a unique way that God has created you that he wants you to bring into this community because Fusion actually needs you to be who you are. There's something that you bring to Fusion that Fusion doesn't have if you're not here. No matter how many other people that are here, there's something that you specifically bring that we need. There's something that you specifically bring that the body of Christ needs. So the more and more that you tap into who God has created you to be and learn who God has created you to be, the more we all benefit from it. Because you have dreams, you have aspirations, you have gifts and talents that God has given you that you need to do in order for us to be better. You are completely significant. One of the things about this, though, uh, to be completely honest with you guys, um, is it takes time. To learn who God created you to be is going to take some time. I wish I was one of those people that just knew from when I was little what I wanted to be when I grew up. When I was six years old, I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be a movie star. Amen, right? <laughs> I didn't have my first full-time job until I was 29 years old. And things have switched. The reason I bring that up is because we don't know what journey God has taken us on, but we know that one day, eventually, we will stumble into who God has created us to be. So if you're struggling right now saying, I don't know exactly what, how God has made me, how he's created me, it's okay. It takes time to learn that stuff. When I look at King David in the Bible, King David was anointed to be king when he was about 12 years old. And me ask you, do you think King David knew how to be a king at 12? Of course not. But God is saying, hey, this is what I want you to be, but it took time for David to grow and mature and to be those things. So, again, the same thing with you. As you continue to grow and learn who it is that you are and who God has made you to be, know it's going to take time. And guess what? You're going to make a lot of mistakes. I've made a ton of mistakes, and I keep making mistakes. But God is going to continue to grow you and shape you. All right, real quick. Next point, community thrives when we care for one another. Community thrives when we care for one another. One of the hardest things in life is, especially at some of these ages in middle school, is to have empathy, right? To put yourself in somebody else's shoes to feel what it is that they feel. Two things I want to do to, to try to help us with empathy so we can grow in it. The first thing I want to say is, it's kind of counterintuitive, I think, in my brain, but to be grateful for what God has given you. The way that you can better be empathetic toward other people is to be completely grateful for what God has given you. Not to overlook it, not to just assume everybody's supposed to have it, like, all right, I just got the clothes on my back, it's all good. Oh, I just woke up today, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. Oh, I get to go to Fusion on Sunday nights, yeah, that's fine. No, like, seriously sit and think and be grateful because there's so many people that do not have this community. When I was your age, I didn't have this. I didn't have fusion. I didn't have um, small group leaders and other people that, that dedicated weekly time to pouring into my life. There were people that definitely cared, don't get me wrong. But I didn't have this. I didn't have a lot of other people that were growing and wanted to, get, wanted to know God more deeply. It was me and two of my other boys. And we found some people along the way. But look at this room, y'all. Don't take this for granted. Be very grateful for what you have. When you wake up in the morning, don't just go, oh, yeah, I was supposed to. Nah, there's so many people that didn't. Be grateful for what God has given you. 
And I think the more grateful we are for the little things in our lives, the more we can look at other people's circumstances and situations and have a lot more compassion because we understand all of the things that God has given us. So one, the first thing to grow in empathy is to be, gra- to be gracious. And then the second thing is learn to ask questions. One of the easiest things I found out about people, people love talking about themselves. You start asking somebody a question, they just talk about themselves and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. But how many times do you ask somebody else and truly ask them multiple questions about how it is that they're doing? You enter into a conversation not so you can talk about what you want to talk about, but just to hear how they're doing. To literally listen. Ask them how their day is going. How their relationship with God is going. How can you pray for them? Those are the ways I think as well that we can grow in empathy is to to literally be concerned about another person and be willing to put what we want on the back burner. So be gracious. I mean, uh, have a lot of gratitude in your life, but then also ask questions. Be inquisitive about what's going on with other people. And the the reason that we can be uh, more empathetic is the more we know about each other, the more we love each other. So here in Fusion, amen for for locking arms and singing songs together. But if we don't ask each other how we're doing, we're not going deep enough. I want you guys to have fun with each other. Yeah, please. But I also want you to be asking each other, hey, what are you reading your word today? What was something that stuck out to you in God's words? What's going on? How's school going for you? How's home life going for you? Like go below the surface to get to a lot more unity. We feel more comfortable with people the more they know what us, about us on the inside, but we have to be willing to not only ask, but then also to share if somebody asks us as well. So I'll even challenge, before the night is over, ask somebody else, let's keep it very simple. Just ask them, um, what, what has God done or said or you've heard about God recently that caught your heart? Simple question. And if you... Don't want to ask that, and that seems too long. Ask somebody how you can pray for them and actually commit to doing it. But there's a lot lot that happens below the surface that we can grow into to be a lot more unified here and in the body of Christ. And then lastly, our unity, our unity gives the world a a glimpse of Jesus. Um, When y'all, like, go in school and all this other stuff, do, do they still have, like, different tables? Like athletes are with athletes and like this clubs are with this club and stuff like that. It's still like that? Kinda. Kinda. All right. People like generally like mix around. Y'all jump around at different tables or do it? Does everybody have their own tables? Everybody have their own tables? All right. So being that everybody has their own tables, what if, what if you walked in school one day and everybody was just going around just talking to everybody? Everybody's mixing, mingling, kind of getting along doing what they're doing, like, they're, they're actually, like, liking each other. They're um, involved in their interests. They're going to their different clubs. First of all, they look kind of strange because it just seemed like a whole bunch of talking. But you would look at your high school and go, like, something different is, is happening in this place. Like, there's something different about this. Like, everybody is, is coming outside of themselves to now get along with somebody else. And that's exactly what the body of Christ is. The body of Christ is saying, taking people that are different ethnicities, different cultural backgrounds, different um, ways of life, Jew and Gentile, and bringing them together saying our commonality is Jesus. The thing that brings us together is Jesus. So what if you walked into your school and saw people from a bunch of different tables that they normally sit at all sitting at a different table now? it will make you so curious to be like, yo, what's going on? And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to look like. We're supposed to make people see us, and when they see us, they ask the question, why do y'all even hang out with each other? It doesn't make sense. And the only answer that we should be able to give them is because of Jesus. So when you guys look over here and around here, you all come from different backgrounds. You may have similar stories, but y'all have the same life experiences. Y'all got different things going on, but when we come together, when you're uniquely yourself, when I'm uniquely myself, and we actually link arms, 
We know each other. We know what's going on on the inside. When people see that, they're going to ask us how. And then that's when we can point to Jesus. When we're doing life the way we're supposed to be doing it, the world will ask, ask us, how do I become a part of this? And I do believe that you guys' generation is going to continue to do that. Jesus and the unity that come with Jesus is far beyond what you can ever think or imagine. And as you continue to grow, you're going to know that. When I was in college, say this, and then I'll pray uh, so the band can come up. When I was in college, if you looked at my friend group, you would never think that we would be close. Like, never. Like, because I'm cool. I'm just like, man. <laughs> but I'm playing. But when you see people that I hang out with, to the eye, because we all do it, you would go, like, they don't mesh. They don't match. Some of these people are in my wedding. These people I call on when things get tough. And the one commonality we have out of the, a ton of things that we don't have in common is Jesus. So guess what happens when divorce happens? Guess what happens when the death happens? Guess what happens when life gets too hard for me to deal with? I don't need a bunch of people that I have stuff in common with. I need people that I can go deep with. And that's what the body of Christ is about. That's what it's all about. And that's something that we can do here in Fusion. So again, let's, let's, let's have fun, but let's go, go below the surface. Because when life happens, we're really going to need each other. And when we do that, people will look at us and go, how? And then we can point them to Jesus. Let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you, Lord, so much for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Thank you, Lord, that, um, God, you are the one that unifies us. God, you bring us together in the most unlikeliest of places. And, uh, God, you are... Uh, you brought everyone here. There's no coincidence that they're here. I just pray, God, that you give um, all of us the courage to be ourselves, that we come with different backgrounds, with different understandings, so we can just come to this place, be ourselves, so we can make this amazing salad bowl, so that when people see us, when they see all these different ingredients coming together, that they would see us and go, what is it about you that makes you different? And then we can just answer and say, you, Jesus. So, God, thank you for what it is that you're doing in Fusion. Thank you for um, having us go um, deeper and deeper beneath the surface. And, Lord, I just pray, God, that uh, your blessing and your hand and your presence will continue to be here. We love you. Praise in Jesus' name. Amen.